Hello everybody. My name is Prasad Sangameshwaran. I am the editor of etbrandequity.com and a warm welcome to all of you on a rather warm afternoon. But like we can see that even though it's the peak of summers for some of us, there are dark clouds hovering all over us as the visual in front of us does illustrate. Also like humanity is at the crossroads like never before. But if you look at that visual a little, a little more carefully, you can actually see green shoots emerging in the horizon. And uh, that's what is the power of ideas, if you could, if I could say so. And who better to tell us about the power of ideas and how to, how ideas can win the situation for us. Whatever challenge life throws at us, ideas will take care of them. And who better to tell us about that than our reader, our panelists for today. Our Sridhar, most of you would uh, have heard about him, uh, was the founder of, you know, uh, Ogilvy Direct. And in some ways, we could call him the father of direct marketing in India. So after having set up a very successful direct marketing practice, he retired from Ogilvy as a director on the board. And after his stint at Ogilvy, Sridhar has been uh, extremely passionate about helping companies ideate, ideate, ideate with his company ideas, RS, uh, where he is the chief trainer. He's also an ideas coach, uh, innovation facilitator, and I could go on and on. So over to you, R. Sridhar. Thank you so much, Prasad. Uh, I'm absolutely delighted by this opportunity to be uh, sharing my perspectives today. Um, I just want to start this presentation with a small request for all the attendees here. What I would like you to do is to slouch back in your chair, relax, close your eyes, and listen to my instructions for the next few minutes. Just close your eyes. I would like you to imagine that you're sitting on the bank of a river. It's a beautiful day. You can actually feel the breeze in your face. You're watching the river stream. And as you're watching it, a small little leaf falls from the tree in front of you. And the leaf starts moving. Then you do something very strange. You tell the leaf, no. You're my friend, you can't go. And to your utter surprise, the leaf stays there. A little while later, the leaf starts moving, and you're saying, no, 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 you, you gotta stay, you gotta, you got you're my friend, you gotta stay. And the leaf stays. Uh, this game for goes for a little while, and finally the leaf stays that please let me go. I gotta go, I don't belong here. All my friends have gone, and I've got to go and join them. With a lot of compassion in your heart, you tell the leaf, with a smile on your face, you tell the leaf, okay, go if you must go, but promise me that wherever you go, you will have fun. And the leaf starts to move away and slowly vanishes from your sight. Slowly vanishes from your sight. Slowly vanishes from your sight. Okay, gently close, open your eyes now. Gently open your eyes. How did it feel? The point of this exercise is whenever we, whenever we are doing something and you have to start afresh, it's very difficult to tear us away from what was happening previously to start a new activity. A small contemplation exercise like that, like what we did just now, helps us to relax our body and mind and be in a position to focus on what is coming up now. So I want to start this presentation with a story. I'm a Mumbaiker. I studied, I've been in Mumbai for all my life. I studied in Bombay. I'm a BSc physics and mathematics from Bombay University. Um, I finished my final year BSc exams in, on 24th of March, the 24th of April, 1969. Uh, that day I came back from uh, work 
my father returned from my uh, from his office so he asked me how was the exam so i said uh, bad he said how bad is bad i said it's so bad that i would either fail or uh, you know get a bad third class so he didn't say anything we had dinner quite late and then next morning as he was leaving for his office he asked me so what do you want to do do you want to study further or you want to go to work and i said no i want to go to work so he said my friend then what you do is you start looking for a job from today so i said my exam just got finished yesterday my results are not out who is going to give me a job so he said listen to me carefully the only time you'll get a job is between now and when you get the results the day the results are out nobody is going to give you a job because you are a failed bsc or a third class bsc that's a absolute great piece of wisdom and advice i received within 13 days from that date i got my first job that was also my introduction to thinking differently so even if there is a situation makes us actually feel frozen if there is a way in which we can step away from it a little bit and think differently a solution will emerge so here is an introduction for thinking differently and we'll move further right can you draw a triangle in your notebook or anything in front of you or draw a triangle in your mind very fast okay you've done that some of you would have got the triangle this way or most of you would have got the triangle this way some might have got the triangle this way where is the triangle is lying on its side very few would have got the triangle upside down like this so in presentations that i make more than 50% of the people get the triangle like so but another 25% or 30% get the triangle sideways and just about 20% get that upside down triangle why does this happen because the moment i say triangle we think of the triangle in this manner and this is also the first right answer once you get the right answer why would you want to attempt another right answer right so we all get stuck with one right answer that's the problem today in this current uncertain times we are plagued with doubts and there is a there is a lack of confidence or poor confidence and so on and so forth and we are looking for different ways of managing things carrying on things getting jobs done making things happen and so on and so forth so what we are really doing is to look at what how does this current situation affect our business and therefore what are some of the possibilities so i have two things that i want to share with you one is what is the purpose of any business and let me show you the correct triangle the normal triangle we draw few people draw the triangle sideways and very few people draw the triangle upside down because it is stuck in your mind that the right way to draw the triangle is this and we also tend to think that is the only way to do it whereas it is not true there is another way to do it and another way to do it so this whole business of looking at one right answer is probably good in safe times and reasonable times but not in uncertain times in uncertain times we may have to look at solution that never has been tried by before tried by us before or never occurred to us before so in these kind of uncertain times we are plagued by doubts and there our confidence is also challenged so what does one do in this situation so if i were to really look at one issue here is what is the purpose of business theodore levitt the management thinker said the purpose of business is to create and keep a customer correct and the purpose of marketing i understand all the audience there today are marketing managers or from the marketing business the purpose of marketing is to find get keep and developing customers so these are two important definitions one is to create and keep a customer and the other is to find get keep and develop customers that is not good enough in marketing because we are also brand people in a in a crowded marketplace how do i stand apart in a flood of sameness 
becomes a very important issue for all brands because a lot of brands are similar in terms of sometimes even the name uh, the looks and feel ingredients propositions advertising etc so in a sea of sameness how do i stand apart becomes a very important brand issue marketing people would often want to think about what would be my winning move in this particular situation right so what is weighing in our minds what is our biggest worry today right given this current kind of scenario what is the biggest worry one of the biggest worry is that doing what i have always done may not work anymore what worked for me before the covid 19 is unlikely to work for me today so what happens is the normal way in which i succeeded is in one way right success is in one or the, my comfort zone is in one way and the success is likely to happen in the opposite direction so if i continue to do what i have been doing comfortably is probably not likely to help me move towards success so if our question is how do i attract more customers in a highly uncertain situation highly competitive marketplace it becomes a very important issue for the market marketing people so this is the same situation i have also faced uh, it's not just you but also in my business the same issues has happened so one of the techniques that i follow in generating ideas is to call a friend where in doubt call a friend So I have a very good friend called Pradeep Shah, who is a former managing director of the Johnson and Johnson Pharma business. And Pradeep gave me a very interesting uh, strategy. It is called follow the heart. Heart is a pseudonym. A uh, heart is a whatever. It's a short uh, this thing, right? So the H is for humanize your interactions. E is for educating your clients, assure your clients that you're there on their side all the time. revolutionize the offering and delivery for instance in my case all my workshops were at their premises in a workshop kind of setup etc now i am saying how can i change the delivery mechanism to online right uh, and reach uh, instead of 25 people maybe i can reach 200 people 250 people and if it is a workshop is successful maybe we can actually reach 2500 people so the revolutionizing the offering and delivery becomes very important and most important is to trust yourself in this change scenario self doubt actually does not help in any way so that is the heart framework humanize the interactions educate customers on how to get the best out of you assure customers that your company values their business and you are on their side reshape what customers believe about your brand and reshape what customers definition of success could be and tackle the future get prepared today so there is no opportunity to stay in the same place you got to you can't be running faster to stay in the same place so who is my customer becomes a very important question today so every business will have to re relook at the customer one is a current customer the other is a future customer it could be a competitions customer and so on and so forth right so what's in it for me is the customer's question all the time any time we are offering him a service or a product what's in it for me is the question so we have to tune in to the customer's mind to be able to answer that question as to what's in it for you in addition how can i also address fears now in many of these cases like let's say that i have been doing business with amazon but one of my fears today is except for a kindle book i'm not sure whether the delivery will reach me because of the certain conditions so given the current situation customers might have several fears in terms of the way in which the business transaction will move forward so how does one company address the fears or your company address the fears how are you geared for addressing the fears who will answer customer questions when there is a difficult customer who will actually handle that person assuage him and so on right so in this question we also need to prioritize actions so there are high impact actions and there is a lot of effort so if it is a high impact high effort then what you are really looking at is major projects which are going to take time if you are looking for high impact and low effort there are some quick wins here 
which will help the customer and us. If it is low impact and high, uh, high effort, they are hard slopes. We don't want to be there. Low impact and low effort are some quick start stuff, which can be either moved there or to major things. So part of this job that we have to look at is to prioritize the way in which we we'll do things for our customers. So what can I do for him should be our constant question for ourselves. What can I do for my customer differently? What will help him do his particular job better? That is going to be our constant question. It's not what's in it for me, it's what, what's in it for the customer, right? How do I engage with them? For instance, if I always engage them through telephone calls, personal visits, and so on, now online is my new way of engaging the customer, right? Uh, formerly, we have been engaging with all our friends and so on with uh, phone calls. Today, WhatsApp is a huge way of engaging our friends and uh, relatives, right? So in this question, what can I customize even in this scenario for the customer? Now, very often we might approach the whole thing saying, listen, nothing can be customized. Maybe something can be customized. So if you can really look at that, that would be a big help for making some, something happen in terms of the customers wanting to do business with us or at least have a conversation with us. And finally, the question is, how do I leverage my relationships? All of us have long-standing relationship with customers. Now, the first thing that we can do is to reactivate all our customer relationships, talk to them, and not ask for business, but they're saying, how are we doing, right? Are you comfortable? Are you full of supplies? Are things happening properly? Uh, do you need any help? If you were to adopt this language, I think you're building a very strong uh, relationship with the customer and taking the entire relationship forward. So in this particular thing, we started by saying heart and the humanizing the whole thing. If all of us are able to take the focus away from transactions to humanizing the effort, I think the conversations and not messages would be the right way to go for us. So then the question also happens saying, how, do, how can I retain my differentiation? Let us say all our competitors are getting onto this. And then all our com competitors are also saying humanize the relationship. Then how do I retain my differentiation? For this, there is a formula called creating a wow. Now the formula for wow is experience divided by expectation. Okay. If your experience is the same as the expectation, the, uh, the equation is equal to one. There is no big deal. Let me tell you a very nice story. This happened to me a couple of years ago. I was traveling in Karnataka. You know, I was going to Bangalore on the way to Bangalore. On, on the way, we stopped somewhere in a restaurant to have some quick breakfast. So we had the breakfast and went away. Two years later, we were on the same uh, road, same route. And my friend said, you remember, we had a breakfast here last time. Let's go for a breakfast there. So we went there, sat down. And even before I could order, the, the, the waiter there came and kept something on my table. It is something called the chow chow bath. Some of you might be familiar with this chow chow bath from Karnataka. So that shira and upit or shira upma in the same plate is called chow chow bath. So I like that. And he gave me a chow chow bath. So I said, listen, I didn't even order this. So he said, no, three years ago you were here and you liked chow chow bath. And you had a second plate also, I remember. So I thought you would like it. And then he gave me a chow chow bath. So now that experience was way ahead of my expectation. And that got me a wow. So here is our opportunity in the current situation is how are you going to create wow for your customers? How can you manage the relationship and customer experience in the way in which it far exceeds their ex expectations? So that's the become, that becomes a very important thing. And the second thing that we need to do, and the most important thing that we, can need, to, we, we need to do is to how do I earn and retain trust? So here is a situation where, uh, because of several uh, changes in the, in the environment, Sometimes we may do things which actually makes the customer wonder whether they can continue to trust us. Now, uh, it's easy for me to say for difficult for, for us to follow is we have to go out of the way to help the customers retain our trust. And therefore, what is our action standard 
in this situation becomes a very important issue. And finally, I, I believe the marketing mantra for most companies will be irrespective of what is happening around us, grow no matter what attitude. Now, the small leaves, you can see the small plant is growing on a rock wall. Okay? It's not growing on soil. So irrespective of how hot the situation might be, grow no matter what might be our attitude, in which case we have to look at how would I break the rules? Look where I have never looked. Speak to people I have never spoken to. Listen to people I have never listened to. So this would be the way we can start looking at new ways of doing things. The last thing that I want to say is the safest place for an aircraft is the ground. But that is not where it is meant to be. Right? So in this particular situation, attitude is everything. Right? I can either feel like a cat or I can feel like a lion. It's all entirely up to us. And the big thing is when the going gets tough, the tough get going. This is my message for you, right? And uh, in this context, the question is, are you ready for the future, for a new future? Because yesterday I attended a presentation. They said that the future has changed completely and it's going to be very different from what we have come from. So the question for us is, what will I be doing more of in this new future? What will I be doing less of in this new future? What will no longer bother me in this new future? Right? And what will stop me from achieving my goal in this new future? So what are the various obstacles, people, process, technology is something we need to address. So within that, you'll see skill is an issue, development is an issue, culture is an issue, tools is an issue and so on. So the business of ideas becomes the most important thing that we have to adopt. So what are the barriers to creativity in this situation? We have to be creative, we have to be innovative. Barriers for creative is the first thing that we say, I am not creative. Everybody is creative. I can promise you, I can prove to you, right? Obsession about one right answer will not be good enough anymore, right? If somebody says this is the way to do it, somebody will have to say what is another way to do it. Because if you don't find the other option, your, your competition might find another option, okay? So here is an example. There is a school in Japan which teaches arithmetic. They don't ask you questions like what is five into four? Five into four, there is one right answer. Instead, they say, in how many different ways can you arrive at the number 100? So 10 into 10 is one right answer. 120 minus 20 is another right answer. 65 plus 35 is another right answer. 500 divided by 5 is another right answer. So let us say there are 20 students in the class, and all of them come with four right answers that are 30 different, uh, there are 80 different right answers. If there is a 50% duplication, there are still 40 different right answers. So that is what we need to do is to look for more than one right answers, as many different right answers for as possible to stay in business and stay competitive. I was doing a workshop with Larson and Tubro, and I showed one photograph of Eiffel Towers, which is this. People who go to Paris shoot a picture of the Eiffel Tower, which looks exactly like the same one that appears in the picture postcard, but this is very different. And one of the engineers came and showed me his mobile phone where he had shot this picture. So where do our answers lie? Our answers may not lie where in our current comfort zone is, but that is where we need to go. So I want to quote, I want to close this presentation by quoting Einstein. He says, Einsteinity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Right, and Prahlad, G.K. Prahlad said, you can't be marginally different and expect to do big things. You have to be radically different, C.K. Prahlad, okay? So that's it. The ultimate solutions to problems are rational. The process for thinking them is not. So my invitation to you is start looking beyond the regular routes of success. Start looking at, looking away from the comfort zone. Okay, 
success might lie in the direction opposite to the comfort zone. Remember what Einstein said, uh, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is insanity. Insanity. C.K. Prahlad said you can't be marginally different and expect to do big things. You have to be radically different. And finally, the ultimate solutions to problems are rational. The process for thinking them may not be. So how can you start using a process to think differently in a manner that has never been done before? So one question that comes up is, how do you build a business case around the low data and high risk situation? So when you, many of us might be familiar with the Cadbury's dairy milk campaign, which is a breakthrough at that time. So all the time before that, chocolates were sold for children. And that is always the case where uh, parents gave the chocolate to ch the child to ensure that the child did what they thought was right. Adults were closet eaters of chocolates. So research showed that they were closet eaters and there could be a big market waiting to be seized if only we can show that adults can eat chocolates without feeling guilty or awkward about it. And then uh, Cadbury's came out with this, the real taste of, the taste of life. And uh, Sai, that, that commercial from Pierce Monday broke all records. Okay, So what criteria should an idea possess? When we generate an idea, what criteria should it possess? Any idea, notice very carefully what I'm saying. The idea must have clarity as to what this idea is all about must be clear. What is the objective it is addressing must be very clear. And what are the benefits and advantages of this idea must be very clear. Right? So why are you thinking of this idea? Who will it help? Uh, what advantages will it have? What is the objective it is for? So when you are evaluating an idea, you can say, is this idea clear? Do we understand it? Uh, is this clear enough for us to uh, actually define what are the next steps? What is the objective this idea is addressing? In the process of doing so, what are the benefits we'll get? And what are the advantages the idea will have? So how do I action ideas? This is another question. Now, the thing is, if you need no one's approval, just do it. Don't wait for anybody else. Right? Procrastinating, thinking that you don't have the approval is a big problem. If you believe in the idea, take the risk and just do it. Right? When you just do it, just do it was a fantastic campaign for Nike shoes. Right? So it's the same thing. If you believe in the idea, if you believe it is right, and you're confident you can make a case for it, just go ahead and do it. If you need no one's approval, just do it. Don't go and ask for approval when you don't need it. And you'll actually be creating a barrier. If you need approval, make a case and get the approval. So you might be in love with the idea. Your person who is your boss may not like the idea, may not be in love with that idea. So in order to make help him approve the idea, you have to make a case and get the approval how do you make a case is to ensure that you look at your idea through his eyes think like him and say what might be the objections to the idea so he might say that where are you going to get the resources for it you might you will have to have the answer for it where will you find the technology for it you'll have to answer have the answer for it where will you get the people for it you'll have to have the answer for it right so if you need approval make a case and get the approval if you make a case once and he sends you back, go back and get back again. Don't give up. That's the whole thing. If you need support, resources, budget, ask for them. Don't drop the idea just because the idea is likely to require support, resources, and budget. So actually list out everything. Go back and say, for these ideas to work, we would need the support from management by giving us decisions and approvals fast. They have to give us resources. They have to give us the budgets to do this. If you don't ask for it, you won't get for it. Right? Ask and thou shalt be given. Understand the stakeholder and what's in it for them. Stakeholders in our case are the decision maker, the bosses, the persons who are going to be investing on this. You might be in love with the idea, but what is the benefit of allowing you to implement this idea for the stakeholder? Will it make him look good? in front of his bosses will it solve one of his major problems which he has been trying to solve but never gets got solved 
you have to look at it from the stakeholders perspective and that's the way in which you can act now on the idea so here is a case i am going to show you right it was a real life case but then i camouflaged the name of the company so it is called abc company and they actually came out with something called autobahn track for people development what if we profile our talented new recruits based on levels of ambition impatience willingness to work hard and take risks what if we offer the highly ambitious people in a hurry a special autobahn track for growth tailored to leverage their special talents so look at this it. a bold idea so you are not going to really go through the promotion route saying there's so many years of survey so many years of uh, you know seniority and all that kind of thing you are saying highly ambitious people in a hurry will be on a separate auto bond track tailored to leverage their this thing right and then how does it work ambitious people in a hurry are selected for a five day intensive auto bond growth program the program helps them to design their future with the help of internal and external career coaches have you heard anything like that okay a route map for growth is drawn for each of the aph which is the ambitious people in a hurry kind of people auto bond program is fast growth based on talent commitment and ability to deliver results contractual obligation to stay minimum 3 years with abc bank okay rewards and recognition or high insight is people who have stayed for 3 years tend to stay much longer just around the time of 3 years is when they get the itch and at that time you're not really looking for helping them in any way to grow they leave and go away i'm sure many people who are hearing the presentation will resonate with this and how does it work regular lane is growth follows regular norm auto bond is the high fast speed high speed growth to growth okay what are the benefits how does this benefit meet our challenge of how might we ensure 100% of our talented new recruits build a career with us the auto bond program caters to the ambitious who want to make it big and earn recognition in society very fast he might have joined the company in one year but he says i am not waiting for 5 years i want to see growth in 12 months or 24 months or 36 whatever it is if he has delivered the growth and then you believe he has the potential to grow are you willing to take the risk with him that's the question the young guys are asking us money is attractive for those people on auto bond and not easy to match by others one is their growth rate and money increments are different from what the rest of the company is getting so we will willing to bet on them and it's also not easy by, for matching by competition figures are constantly revised to keep pace with market realities okay what is reality in terms of uh, rate you know salary rates are different from what it was 10 years ago and 20 years ago so i can't turn around and say that when i was in ogilvy the highest pay was this much everybody laugh in my face okay they are pampered and spoiled now this is something hr people will not like nobody wants to be pampered and spoiled but here we are saying the autobond uh, uh, program says we will pamper these fellows and spoil them make them feel like heroes a performance driven culture supports such stars okay not easy to replicate in terms of spontaneous acts of recognition quantum and frequency or rewards etc very very difficult for competition to follow okay their leadership may not have the guts to do this okay each one gets a raising coach this is interesting each one gets a raising coach who helps them in improving skills and getting ready for the next turn all racing drivers get a racing coach they tell them how to speed when to slow down when to take a turn when to overtake all that is done so likewise every autobahn candidate gets a racing coach therefore the best people will stay with us much longer because they are going faster in staying in the same place than if you were to change it what are the potential gains of this heroes used to our culture of performance and rewards can't survive in any other cultures right their long stints with us will help in maintaining our lead over competition 
they long tenure with us they actually help shape the company's culture but because the culture is changing they are changing we remain constantly competitive reputation as a leader will propel growth and attract talent continuously so we will be a high growth high retention company stakeholder concerns stakeholder concerns are the senior leaders management will take at least 12 months to implement a program like this benefits may not be immediate how can we reduce this time this will disrupt our current recognition and rewards program how can we integrate the two it may cause discomforts in non sales staff how do we handle that that's a very important thing sales staff can show results what happens to a person in administration what happens to somebody in hr what happens somebody in supply chain and so on and so forth a very important question to answer right how does one ideate in times like this what we mean by ideation times like this describe it these are uncertain times people are anxious what will tomorrow be like no one is sure when you are ideating focus on the task what do you need ideas for apply the lens of times like this when evaluating the idea choosing one for execution making investments on it okay so this is it so in at times like this we our speed of response changes our nature of response changes our our ability to approval and uh, approve and act on things changes so this is the way one might change the ideation process to answer this question how does one business build a business case right and what was the way in which we had to look at this So this is the presentation I made. I'm very happy to answer questions on this. How to build a business case around the low data, high risk situation. Okay, I'm open for questions, uh, Prasad. Thank you so much. It was really interesting. Uh, one of the thoughts that you know occurred in my mind was you know you put those three criteria that people should use uh, but uh, should those criteria come right at the stage of thinking about ideas or does it occur only when evaluating the ideas uh, the criteria should be at the stage of evaluation right so 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 are there uh, any criteria that people should follow while thinking about ideas or so should it just be free flowing and just speak up oh okay so the only guideline i'll give not criteria but guideline is that look at uh, generating ideas for the specific challenge that has been given right right that is one second is go beyond the first right answer Right. So, so, so starting, uh, so the starting point should be a very clearly defined challenge, right? That should yes, be single line. Yeah, single line statement without additional conditions and clauses and all that. One simple thing: How do we grow fifty percent with our current customers in spite of the current situation? Clean one single line. A statement should be like that, right? Now, whether I have the resources, okay, so don't I, have the resources, yeah. come much later. Yeah, yeah. You're asking me something, Prasad. Yeah. Yeah. So then you said that then uh, from there moving on, then you said that yeah, you don't restrict yourself while thinking about ideas, right? That's when we got. So, so what what happens is that most of us think that we are not creative, right? Sometimes we feel that I can't think differently. I can't come out with brilliant ideas. Right, I can't think like Piyush Pandey and all that kind of stuff. No, we problem is we also compare ourselves with all sorts of people, I mean, uh, great people. Right now, in our own ways, we are creative. We find creative solutions all the time. Right, if one idea doesn't work, we when we want to solve something, we do something else. Right, in in this current situation, I know any number of people who are finding interesting new ways to keep busy. I can give you one example. I have a very, a very interesting question. Yeah. Can I just finish this? Yeah, one yeah. Small thing. Yeah, please, please I, give the example. Very, yeah. very conservative South Indian lady has started Carnatic music lessons online. 
okay nobody would have thought that she would do anything like this so that's the proof you are asking me a question yeah uh, so you know umesh kumar wants to know that you know in the process of ideation do we kind of start with volumes or do we stick to value superb question superb question you must go for quantity volume because if you have only one idea the chances of it, it is the right idea it's the greatest idea is very low you must think of as many different ways of solving the problem as possible then choose the one which is likely to be the most cost effective and efficient so all creative people before coming and showing you the work they would have tried alternatives and then uh, go for the best solution that they have in mind every creative person now do you know for instance every film that is shot right the same shot is shot in as many different ways same frame is shot in as many different angles and so on and then at the editing stage the person chooses a back shot right so should i do a close up should i do right. a mid shot should i do a long range you ask any cameraman if you go to a film shoot they'll tell you at the editing stage the director and the editor together say let's put this shot here and sometimes they'll say let us not even show the person boss right let's just show the product but the voice over say something whatever it is so that's the kind of stuff so the answer is as many options as possible don't stop with one answer okay and uh, you know another question that's come from rajesh singh is that you know how do you build creative confidence you know it, it goes back to that thing which you said that i don't think i'm as creative so how do you instill that creative confidence in yourself so super question there is a book called creative confidence right from the same people who run this uh, ideo company right one of the founders oh, okay. have written that yeah, very good book now creative confidence is first thing is to uh, you know for instance if you want to clean up a vessel you got to remove all the dirt right is that a fair thing right you remove yes. all the dirt and the mark. so for you to have the creative confidence you must you must remove this feeling that i am not creative right so yeah. how do you remove this now generally i'll say i am not creative because when they ask me for an idea i can't think of an idea right when they ask me for an idea i give them only one idea and when they ask me for an idea i am not able to give them the best idea all that kind of stuff right so first thing is to say that if they ask me for an idea i am going to give an idea that occurs to me at the time when they am giving the idea i am not worried about it is a perfect idea the right idea the best idea i am going to give as many options as possible the responsibility of picking up one idea taking it for execution is that of the problem owner not yours unless he asks you for advice that is why a cameraman shoots so many frames because he and the director know that finally for a song sequence they have to have as many different options as possible right do you agree with that right yeah yeah, yeah. what's the next question so uh, so so lot more questions uh one comes from rimjim gupta uh, the question is that customers are influenced by experience of their peers in embracing a new idea how do we right. identify a group of customers who will be open to participating in new ideas so you want customers to give you new ideas is that the question no they the, i guess this question is more about you know getting customer buy in when you put new ideas ah. out in the market right right so there is a very interesting uh, thing that we learned uh, in advertising right so in advertising also we have the same problem if you take a take a solution to a client see he is particularly operating in a particular category and all category advertising looks like this okay now you take the cadbury's example around the time the first cricket commercial came till then all cadbury's advertising used to be uh, 
child doing something good and parents rewarding it with a cadbury's dairy milk chocolate that was the framework right research showed that adults are closet eaters of chocolates so how do we change that paradigm and then when that new advertising was shown client was definitely uncomfortable right so what you need to do is to talk about the benefits of this idea how will it address the objective that you're looking at and how will the standard objective the standard ad will not do it so first one of the things that we learned is always give the client what they are looking for first which is comfortable right and the next layout i'll show is completely different from what he has looked at and say on the other hand there is a new way of doing this now first i have respected the client for what he is looking for fine and i show him something else which is very new then i make a case for it so if you if you are respected me for or asked for then i respect you for what you want to show me does that make sense yeah yes yeah so you know you also spoke about you know the the selection of the ideas is of the person who owns the problem but in corporations hmm. it's a collective problem right so is it always the boss who owns the problem and he picks the idea or is democracy at work uh see finally what happens is the guy who pays the money he has to take it all yeah so in a way he also the problem owner the risk he has so to that take. means if if it's an internal brainstorming then the top boss takes the call yeah in picking the so, right idea correct so therefore the way we present the idea to him is very important right so what what happens most of the time right. is that you know, the boss we all know the boss will like this idea right so we stop with it right so we take the easy out yaar ye to boss ke sath pada pad chale jayega right i am just saying but if you are sold on another idea first go him and show him this idea and you when he is about to say go ahead etc he said sir i if you can i show you another idea which i've got i just want to see what you think of it right so because you have respected his view and you have shown him an idea that he likes he will give you the permission to show him another idea this time you show your idea correct okay so he is he is in a frame of mind to receive and then you say yeah. this idea this will do this do this do this in addition this advantages this also can happen because of this and not only that in executing this we don't need to face this 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 problem so i thought this is uh, i would have thought all his objections and all his objections are met in this sailing so it is in in a classic sales situation as a salesman overcome objections so are we okay and, becoming good yeah. at selling idea that's the point yeah sorry yeah no the next question is that how do you create a organization culture that makes it a fertile ground for new ideas you know what what is it in the most creative companies across, across the world what's the key pillars of their culture yeah okay now in any culture there are heroes correct yeah do you agree with me in any culture there are heroes yes, the, heroes, the heroes are celebrated because they are uh, exemplars of the company culture correct yeah in some companies the guys who right. save money are celebrated in some companies who are uh, who are actually meeting sales targets are celebrated so first thing is leadership must celebrate heroes who come out with new ideas Right. It is in the leadership, leadership's responsibility to celebrate new ideas. Celebrate new ideas. In addition, celebrate successful new ideas. If you celebrate only successful new ideas, then nobody will come out with new ideas because success becomes a big thing. Right. Right. Okay. And so how how do you be? Yeah. And yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Please continue. No. No. What I was saying is that. and i showed you the different ways of arriving at number 100 right right now when when a, when when your uh, person says this is the way to solve the problem 
if the boss says okay this is one way to do it what is another way to do it can you think about it why do you come back with two or three more options for me to look at i have to say increase sales in bangalore city right i have one idea so uh, you know go and dump all the distributors one idea right so i said that is fine that is what we have been doing but i know a lot of them are very upset with us so show me a couple of more ideas for increasing sales in bangalore city so if the boss asks for it you can't go back because he said yeah that is one idea i am not rejecting or accepting it what else can we do so the boss must ask what else can we do what else is possible so suppose you go to a restaurant right you are not in a great hurry but you are mildly hungry so you go and say right. आज क्या है सो ही गिव्स यू द रूटीन मेनू इट्स नहीं नहीं इसके अलावा क्या है भाई स्पेशल क्या है आज सो देन यू विल से ऑनियन रवा डोसा बट राइट और रॉन्ग इफ यू डोंट आस्क इट डजंट बिकॉज इट डजंट अकर टू टेल इम बिकॉज ही यू नो या राइट या यू आर सेइंग समथिंग नो शिवम फ्रॉम माइंड या शिवम फ्रॉम माइंड सॉल्यूशंस is asking this question about uh, the line between b2c and b2b marketing is blurring but b2b marketing is still about delivering value uh, of a product or service you know uh, this often leads to creative blockage according to him so his question is how do you overcome this blockage in b2b marketing scenario where okay. the tone of communication is extremely formal right so uh, the first thing that i want to say is saying b2b marketing is all about value b2c is not about value is is questionable in b2c also value has to be delivered no customer is buying right. because uh, your advertising is fantastic your advertising is great and the product sucks i am not going there again correct if the advertising is fantastic it is not delivering walk ins to the retail shops i am not buying that advertising It, it has to deliver value in the context of its objective. In B to B, we make assumptions that it has to be straightforward and boring. We have not tried anything else. I'll give you an example. All right. Think, uh, Xerox yeah. came with a photocopying machine which could actually photocopy X-ray films. Okay, it's a very expensive machine. Yeah. And they wanted a direct mailer for this. fine so i was in oindem direct and we had to find an interesting way to do this and they had done many options and the and the md who was a german md was not at all happy with it so they came to oindem direct right fine and then and the yeah. whole thing was this this copier can copy things on an x-ray film this is it so one of my creative guys came with a fantastic idea he says what if the mailer is not on paper but on x-ray film right right if some, right. something is amazing if it is on yeah if it is on x-ray film you have to hold it against the light to read it you can't just read it yeah correct so it was a highly exactly. involving point yeah and it went to all managing directors mr cash showed whose name it was uh, the, the ceo at that time he was zap right and this idea this actually broke our mindsets also the idea that was given to us was not by any senior creative person it was given to us by, by a copywriter who was one month in one month old in the agency wow it broke it actually broke all mindsets right and the guys now that that was an interesting thing so even the creative so, process yeah, in the organization yeah. Now the approval process within the agency, uh, the the lower down guys didn't let it go. Okay, so one day during lunch, I was sitting and having lunch with the uh, creative team in their desk, and I saw one X-ray film lying around there. So I picked it up and saw, and then the guy who created it uh, showed uh, that and said, "Can you read what is on that tent?" Right, and I read it. It was a message for their copier. I said, "What is it doing here? Why I have not seen it?" uh they, they said your executive thought you will not like it 
I said, oh, how did you decide that? He said, no, they didn't let me show it to you. And he said, they will fly into a rage AO and all that kind of I said, so the, the problem was not with them. The problem was my image of somebody who was unwilling to accept new stuff. Right? Uh, okay. so, so I had to change my own perception within my own team saying, I'm willing to look at new, different, even risky ideas. I'm willing to back it. The moment that happened, and I got the, uh, the X-ray film idea sold with the client, and the creative guy said, this guy is our champion. He's a tough bugger, but then he'll support our ideas. He'll be demanding. He'll ask 100 questions, but he'll support it. So that's what is required. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. You know, there is another question, and this could particularly be true in highly creative agencies. You know, they say that if you are the purple cow standing out from the crowd, but huh. your organization already has many purple cows, so how do you as an individual still stand out? So what is the, the, the thing that I suggest is, don't worry about standing out. Let your work stand out. If your work stands out, you stand out, especially as a creative person. If you try very hard to stand out, <laughs> then you start wearing funny clothes, funny shoes, funny topis, all that kind of stuff. I know creative people who stood out because they delivered fantastic results, whether it's the Piyush Pandey or a Balki or anybody else or the Sridhars, or the creative Sridhars, right? They all stood out because they delivered superb campaigns then that delivered results then you stand out sonal dabral any of this name you look at there is not a single creative person who is uh, uh, you know respected to be outstanding but he hasn't got enough work to show right great film director all his films have flopped has it happened? <laughs> okay, yeah. you know, so, you know, uh, coming to that uh, point that you made about, you know, how do you know that an idea was a blockbuster to start with? Does that mean that you have your finger on the most relevant consumer insight before the idea itself? Or no, no. The, there are two things. One is that sometimes you have the insight from research. Sometimes right. we're all human beings and we know human insights. Right? A hungry man wants food is an insight. Yeah. Right. But, but then how does it become like, okay, an old person wants chocolate? Now, was that, so was that, you know, yeah. So in that case, how did you identify the breakthrough idea or it just became breakthrough once you put it out. So why is it that the old man who wants chocolate, why is he not eating it out in open? For fear of ridicule, right? Right. So if I make it socially acceptable for him to eat a chocolate, then it is okay, right? There are many people in this country who used to drink in the slide. Right. Before, before, you know, it became permissible for everybody to drink. And it's, it, was a, right. it was okay. Even women drinking today is not frowned upon, right? Right. So you must understand consumer reasons. Why is it that people do things? There are three things that happen in anything that right. you do in terms of process. Does it do what I'm looking for? How does it make me feel? What will other people say about me? Correct? Yes. And, uh, you know, uh, since we started with an exercise, uh, if if you could kind of permit me and if there are no more questions, can I end with asking you about an exercise? You know, what are the five things that uh, people need to do to keep the creative mojo inside them, live and kicking? Okay, so I don't need five things. I will just suggest one, right? Just hold on and I'll show it. Okay. Now... There is a thing called rebus puzzles. Right. Okay. Now, can you see this first one here? Yeah. So what happens is, 
you only get to see this and you have to figure right. out what is this expression it is bigger and better so it's here right so you want to see or this is top secret it's a combination of visual yeah. and words so you can make out right. this one red one it is a red herring so what could this be yeah i'm showing the arrow on this what could fine this be fine print fine yeah, print yeah fine print fine print small print okay okay take this what could this be besides the point or up to a point because both are up right <laughs> okay there are two of them so it's okay. up to a point yeah so what could this be okay so the around the world yeah the hand is around the world right so what happens is yeah. you have to you have to go beyond what is obvious and make connections so there are many things right. there are many such puzzles that are available on the net so every day play at least for about 10 15 minutes so you will get into the habit of looking beyond the obvious and start making connections correct so you have to constantly keep doing exercises and to keep the mind trained it is part of training the mind to be able to make connections where it is not obvious to another person that is what the creative person does no right if the creative person is not and, uh, able to and, uh, do, uh, do you yeah, yeah sorry you were saying something sir no no uh, you know yeah yeah last question was that you know but most organizations feel that they have to be like creative on demand these days you know because ideas need to just keep flowing in these current times so how do you ensure that you are like you know constantly on the idea treadmill okay okay now uh, treadmill is probably not a very comfortable term for me so oh. if you uh, okay if sorry you any, <laughs> no, no, it's okay if you go to any fast food restaurant what 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 yeah. what is the way they what, yeah what is the fast food restaurant say you'll get pizza in x minutes am i right yeah yeah what is the way they deliver uh, pizza in x number of minutes by keeping most ingredients ready i guess so the entire kitchen and process and machinery is geared to deliver pizza fast yeah so the ingredients are ready the oven is uh, hot and ready the batter is ready this that etc right so the right. organization is geared to deliver products in high speed right so in order for us to deliver creative work at high speed we must organize ourselves to deliver at high speed super super so beautiful we can't, so we can't turn around and say listen boss for a campaign we need 10 days in 10 days another the business might have gone to another agency <laughs> right yeah so the client says i am briefing you today my uh, my md is traveling day after tomorrow to the us and he is off for a holiday for one month we don't want to lose that time can you present tomorrow right so there are many things people do okay in the old days corporate campaigns was a very important thing for a lot of organizations and more or less right. everybody was doing the same thing correct so i know many agencies which used to have a whole lot of corporate campaigns uh, layouts ready right okay so if somebody asks for it change the logo and show it to them <laughs> now this is spilling out that's the uh, secrets the no, but i mean secret. yeah but the point i'm making is that if the market demands high speed give yourself to deliver high speed beautiful beautiful right it's a lovely so thought think, uh, yeah, yeah. Think of, how can i think quickly so you know the the huge uh, uh, elaborative thing that you know that uh, where which takes 9 months to deliver a baby kind of stuff you know uh, people don't right. have that kind of time today so you must have the ability to think fast so if you are training programs if you have creative training programs 
you, you there must be one section in the training program saying you know you deliver uh, you, you get a brief at 9 o'clock we want to see the first champion at 11 o'clock yeah right so and just because you're delivered at 11 o'clock you don't have the license to give us some lousy work that's not on right so we want a damn good campaign by 11 o'clock so people must understand how to think differently how to understand consumer insights fast right for instance if you take account executives they must be able to get a brief from the client very fast so i'll give you a very simple example okay when i meet a client i have elaborate set of questions to ask if the client has the time there are times client says that look there is no time for us to meet but i need to meet you so you know what i have done i have said uh, are you traveling and he says i am traveling i said where are you traveling when are you traveling he said i am leaving this evening i said what time is your flight and then x y z i i have to leave from uh, you know early to this so i said i'll i'll join you in the other okay and i'll travel with you in the car up to the airport and we'll discuss the brief in the car fine the first thing is i don't have time is broken because i have an option no client is able to say anything right. and when i'm in the car he is my captive audience fine so then i have developed very simple questions uh, what is happening today listen to these questions carefully yeah what is happening today in the context of his brand or business second question is what would you like happening instead right so he has described point a and described point b which is his aspiration so what is coming in the way of your getting to point b so he'll tell me a couple of barriers to that then third fourth one i'll ask which is the biggest barrier okay then if the biggest barrier happens to be retail network then advertising is not going to solve the problem unless he wants new retailers fine so once we get to the biggest barrier i know what is the next step then i will be in a position to tell client okay so what you want advertising to do is move the consumer from point a to point b or move the retailers from or distribution to do from this or uh, you know get the sales force to believe this instead of that or whatever it is i get the brief what is the communication brief i will be able to get out in one hour's time right so when i come back to the office i will be able to give him a very simple one hour brief one hour is my brief is 10 minutes balance 15 minutes is for dealing with clarification questions at the end of it if there is some you know speedy gonzales kind of guys who are willing to show me headlines i'm willing to look at that there will be because people think in headlines people think in visuals you ask any creative people i mean i know many of them who do that there are guys who think in terms of commercials am i right yeah uh, in fact it's very interesting i think we can keep going on and on the questions will never stop coming from our end but i think in the interest of time and i'm sure you have other Address things to do as last well last three questions just last three questions is that okay what till what yeah. time do you want to go yeah so we'll okay. finish at six we, we, yeah we can we can wrap up at the earliest you know yeah. one one question uh, comes with respect to the last line that you made in your presentation i think it had something to do with the mobile so how do you use the mobile to mine for golden ideas that was okay so uh, look at your mobile okay i'm i'm happy you asked that question so if you look at your mobile look at all the programs that you have or all, all the apps that you have you you can store pictures there you can store yes. music there you can store your dictionary there right and you have whatsapp there and you have your uh, google there uh, so you have gmail there so anything that you want everything is available there so if you want ideas i i have a technique called phone a friend so your mobile can help right, you phone a friend which you mentioned yeah. right right if you want to ask couple of guys i can form a very quick group for instance i am right now teaching couple of people uh, creative blockbusting online 
Okay. Okay. There are twelve people who have signed up. This is a test. So we are going through step by step on my book. Twelve people online, and this only through using WhatsApp. Fine. Okay. So we found they are coming every day at seven thirty, and we are working together on this. Nice. Right. So you can find any kind of app on this. There are many apps. There are also uh, other apps that are available where you might be able to get ideas. So explore various apps that can help you in this process. Brainstorming apps must be available. Check it out. Right. This Rebus uh, apps must be available. Okay. So get a set of apps which can stimulate your thinking and you know give you a whack on the head to help you think differently. Right. Yeah. Music that you know. There are uh, other things. Use the five senses. Um, except for the sense of touch and taste, the other three senses can be here. I think, right? Yeah. Do you have your favorite foods? There is, there is a, there is a, mm, uh, there is something called bullseye. You know, it's a peppermint kind of thing. It comes with black stripes on it. It's more goliye. Right. It's got a very tangy yeah. taste. I use it in my brainstorming workshop. You you have one bullseye. It uh, it secretes a lot of saliva, and it's, it's got a very nice, interesting taste and feeling inside the mouth, and it immediately activates your senses in some fashion or shape. Eat something tangy. Imli, for instance, right? So figure out what works for you. Wow, it's, and a, it's a it's a very you, you it's a very nice own... but cute tip. Yeah. Hmm? I thought it was very interesting tip. The that what you eat can trigger your creative senses. Yeah. Wow, uh, you, that's you that's all, brilliant. You I, all, I, yeah. Use all five senses, and I suggest you create your own creative toolkit and fill it with the material with five senses. Sometimes. Uh, a photograph of a sunrise can uh, evoke very interesting things. So if you have a religious guru, maybe put his picture. You know, maybe it can. Uh, if you have a kid's picture, then it can be your wife's, the mother-in-law's. You know, whatever is evocative need not be positive all the time, right? So have pictures, have little objects which you touch, have things to eat. Jira goli is a fantastic thing. Have you tried jira goli recently? No, not really. Right, right. Some people go out. Have it's a, a lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I, yeah. I, yeah, I have Jiraguli at home. No, like you mentioned, Amazon doesn't deliver during the lockdown. Otherwise, I would have. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just saying, don't worry about lockdown. Go to your kitchen. Look at anything right. that you have not tasted before. If nothing, have a spoon of sugar and have it. Nice. Eat plain imli. Brilliant. See, when all, all, all of that is safe. Okay. If you take a little, bit, little small piece of imli and put a little bit of uh, chili powder on it and eat it, uh, it, you'll actually burn your tongue for a few seconds. But look at what it activates. It remind you of belpuri that you had in chapati, where the whole thing was so tangy and spicy. You know, you wanted to eat more of it. it reminds you of things, people, places, situations, right? The whole thing right. is to activate your memory, which is dulled because of the routines. Break the routine. That's the mantra. If okay. every day you have a bath only in the evening, have a cold water bath at 5 a.m. in the morning. See what happens. You'll not die. Subject yourself to different experiences. That's the point. Beautiful. That that essentially kind of I think uh, we've covered a lot of ground, and uh, yeah. I think uh, as planned the questions have been flowing, and, and there's been a wonderful audience of nearly 300 people who've stayed with us right wow. from you know the beginning. So My goodness. yes, yes, we did touch wow. that number. Which I'm really, hum really we, humbled by. We, we were fairly conservative, but yeah. So I should, yeah. I should thank you very much for having 
spent so much time with us answering the most basic of our questions and i should thank our wonderful audience for having sent a lot of questions and once again mr shridhar it was a pleasure having you with us this afternoon and uh, all the best to everybody can, you, can, you, have can, a, can we hear a big round of applause for all ourselves yeah i think we can should you, all clap even though it's not 5 pm yeah. but 6 but we can still okay. clap for ourselves <laughs> uh, so uh, talking about uh, 5 pm clapping and all that there is an interesting aside uh, many of the people who see my picture have some interesting things to say okay <laughs> yes <laughs> okay guys thank you so much all of you uh, look forward to being in touch thank my email id is available with them i think they are most welcome to write emails to me should they require anything at all i'm very happy to be in touch uh, so so why don't you why don't you just say your email id also just in case people want to note it down okay it is sri dhar sridhar at the rate of ideasrs.com i d e a s r s.com thank you very much okay thank you thanks, thanks for thanks much so much for your time thank you very much all yeah, of you. you thanks for your time all the very best take care stay safe uh, we'll all be out soon and meet each other right look forward all the very best thank you yeah thank you bye 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 thanks